Hi there, and welcome to Scout the Game Week. Scout the Game Week is Fantasy Football Scouts' weekly podcast, brought to you by the Scout Network. In each episode, we'll look back at the game week we have just played to assess what we can learn to help us in the next round of fixtures. I'm your host, Ryan, from Football Chatbox. Let's scout the game week. This week, I'm joined by Quentin uh, from FPL Amateurs of Oz podcast. Uh, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, not too bad. I think just finished speaking about how um, uneventful this morning's been uh, in the fixtures. So, um, yeah, no, not too bad apart from that. But um, as I said, got the netto clean sheet. So that's probably the only happiness I'm feeling at the moment. Fair enough. I, I don't even have that. I wish I, I was telling you, I wish I doubled up on Bournemouth defence. Uh, or even got a single Bournemouth defender in 28 and I didn't. Uh, now I'm paying for my sins. Here we are. Um, so we'll see. Obviously, we are recording this after day one of Game Week 31. Um, and the Arsenal, they start later tonight or early morning for us, basically. We've got the Arsenal game and also City playing as well. So I've got triple Arsenal with two Arsenal attackers. So I, I'm, I'm hopeful. But whenever you be hopeful in FPL, it always like returns. Um, <laughs> the returns aren't there with the same level of hope. So we'll see. We'll wait and see. Um, it's better just to set the bar low, mate. I and know. Then, um, build from there. I know. Oh, every week, just hope for a red arrow, and then if you get a red arrow, it is what it is. <laughs> if you get a green, it's good. Uh, but let's start. Uh, like I said, we are only at day one uh, at the time of recording, so we still have a few more big games to go, which could impact what happens in game week thirty-two. But Having said that, let's still have a look at the upcoming game in 32. So let's start with Spurs. Now, they did play th- in 31 and defensively they have been unable to keep any sort of clean sheets. And I did watch the highlights as well, uh, the extended highlights against West Ham and it looked like West Ham were the ones that were dom- dominating the game majority of the time. Um, now, they're about to play Forest, who just scored three against Fulham. Um, but it is a home game, so... Do you, I mean, like with Spurs defense, what do we do? Do we keep them? Do we sell them? Is it even worth buying the Spurs defender for those who are looking to like wildcard late as well? What's the play? I was having a look at it today. I, I think you move away from the, the Spurs defense just because the way Ange plays does leave them vulnerable to the counter. And like you said, West Ham had some really good chances, actually. Like, I think mean, Kudus had a couple of good chances. Bowen had a couple of good chances. Um and just looking at their fixtures, I think like there's maybe a couple of good fixtures, but I think with the blank in 34, I think you, you're wanting to move away and look elsewhere. And and this season we've seen or lately the defenders have been really bad. So you could, you know, pick the best defenders and they're still not getting points. So I think moving away and maybe downgrading and using that money elsewhere in your team is probably the go for me. Yeah, fair enough. Now, um, there was another defender who performed... Uh, today in Ed Nuri. Um, I've got myself a Pedro Porro and unfortunately I have no money in the bank at the moment. So I need to like sell Porro to free up anything to like make moves elsewhere. Um, and I'm wondering, is do I play Porro against Forest this week or do I like take the punt on Nuri? Because I've, actually, let's let's go to Bulls. Um, they had a draw against Burnley, but I don't know. And I don't think Ed Nuri was playing fullback. I think he was playing basically like a winger slash forward um, from the highlights that I saw. Um, apart from him, are there any other Wolves players that are interesting for the upcoming weeks? Um, I was kind of just looking like Wolves defensively are a little bit hit and miss, but at home they're a lot better. And the majority of their homes on the uh, games on the run home are all home. So I think there might be six home games left that they've mm. got to play or five. And they've got two in the double, which I know one's against Arsenal. So we write that one off but the other one's a decent fixture but maybe i was looking at jose sar so the his debut season he was really good got save points and if wolves defense can play a little bit better where as i said on um the show we're on last night together you want your defense to not be great but also only give up low percentage shots so then you know they keep you can get the save points so jose sar is actually sitting at about 67 percent save percent so it's, I think he's ranked maybe about sixth overall out of all the keepers in the Premier League at the moment. So with their fixtures and if they can keep it a bit tighter at home, I think he could be a bit of a, a, a smoky option there in the, the goalkeeping department. Because we were talking about goalkeepers last night, the likes of Neto and Leno and, and maybe going up to a David Raya or an Onana or someone like that. But people that have bench boosts left actually don't mind the play of having Jose Sarr as that second option sort of 
on the bench for your bench boost. Yep, fan, especially for like 34 bench boost. Definitely a good option. He hasn't been spoken about too much because I think it's just that they've had the Arsenal fixture and I think the other one is Bournemouth, if I'm not mistaken. So from a clean sheet perspective, you don't expect them to kind of concede um, yeah. because of the game. I mean, so you expect them to concede because of the games. Um, but I mean, before that, they've got West Ham and Forest. Um, and I'm thinking now, obviously, per, per, Pedro Parra plays Forest this week. But I'm wondering if I should just bite the bullet and get in Nuri against West Ham this week. Although Nuri could concede, but he could also score from what we've seen. <laughs> so Yeah, well, Aiden Nuri does play really attacking, which is probably the best asset. Defensively, he's all right. Mm. But when he's getting consistent games, you see him pop up in like the the box and you're like, oh, who's that? And then yeah. you look and it's like Aiden Nori. And you're like, why is he Why is he playing like a wide winger? <laughs> exactly. So I, I think I might actually do it because like even Poro is not as attacking as Nuri at this moment. So if both of them are going to concede a clean sheet at this point in the fixture that's coming up, I might as well take the punt on the more attacking fullback, I guess. Um, yeah, well, I was even um, maybe looking at a couple of city options that are a bit cheaper than Pedro Poro, which could be maybe an alternative depending yes. on um, obviously that's also true because i did consider that because i already have a backline so i'm planning to dead end in 34 so my backline has the likes of um Branthwaite, gabriel and um who was the other defender that i got oh van dyke so i've basically got like a back three for 34 effectively so i do i really want to add another defender i probably if i do i probably bench Branthwaite instead but he has yep. Forest and Liverpool. I don't mind the Forest game, to be honest. Um, yep. So then I go, okay, maybe should I just go for a City defender instead? Because they have Palace and Luton. Yeah. 32 and 33, which is not too bad. And they have the early kickoff. So maybe we get some leaks and we know what City defender is starting as well. Um, yeah. Because I think looking at the two options there, like if you've got a Kanji um, 4.9, then you've mm. got um, Vardy L on 4.8 and... Kyle Walker's out injured. You've got, um, I think, the only really center options at the moment are Diaz, Akanji, and Stones. Yeah. Is Other Stones three. Is fit or was he also? He's not flagged anymore, so unless okay. he's been declared fit. But um, Kyle Walker looks to be out for a little bit. Um, Ake's out for a little bit. Rico Lewis, yes, can play. But mm-hmm. I think Vario, now that he's back fully fit, I think he's going to start most weeks. And he has that BPS potential as well. So would he, go, he is quite creative. So you would lean more towards Guardiol or would you lean towards Akanji instead? I think it's going to come down to budget because as you know, when you're planning your wild card, sometimes it's point one could yeah. be a massive difference on how your team looks. So I think Akanji is probably the most consistent one that's going to be playing more minutes just because he is central and yeah. Rico Lewis can play out wide, but I think both are great options. It just depends on obviously how much you have, but they're only point one difference. So I think either or either for me, I think are both good picks. Fair enough. Okay, so that's something I need to consider because it's either that or I go Nuri, and I still don't know which one. I'll have to have a look in terms of budget because Nuri and the City defenders are there is a slight difference in there. So I need to see if that impacts any like moves that in in thirty four. Yeah. Um. All right. Now, um. So that's Wolves, and we've touched on Spurs as well. Let's move to the big game this weekend. Manchester United take on Liverpool. How do you see this game going? Oh, I really hate making predictions for this fixture because I think um we were in a good run of form the year that they beat us what seven nil or six nil mm. or whatever it was, and I was quite confident that we could um do something in that fixture. And then yeah, we got put to the sword, but. I think um, there's going to be goals in that fixture. I actually think Liverpool are quite vulnerable at the back as well. I don't think with no Trent, Robbo's, you know, 50-50 whether he plays or not. I think that they're a little bit vulnerable at the back. So I think there's going to be goals in that fixture, but I think Liverpool are good enough to get the job done, especially if what's at stake for them compared to us. Like we do want to finish top five, but I think the urgency from Liverpool to, you know, push for the top of the table still, I think that could push them over the line. I think, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if there was a minimum of four goals in that game. So yeah, no fair. clean sheets. Maybe plenty of save points for Onana. Probably, maybe. I, I, I mean, now, so I've got triple Liverpool for this week with uh, Darwin, Salah and Virgil. Now, initially I was thinking, like, I was wondering whether I should bench Van Dijk or not. Uh, but then there's obviously the opportunity for him to get like a headed goal from somewhere. 
um, given that we're so bad at events. Even set pieces, United are pretty poor. So I don't mind starting all three Liverpool players. Initially, I was looking to bench at least one just because of the fixture. Yeah. You think United will score, which most likely they will. Um, but they've just been... Um, uh, the amount of shots that they concede, it's just so hard to like kind of ignore. Um, I was doing... Um, you know how Rob T, he makes his uh, predicted goals um, yeah. stat? So on my channel, we, we've been tracking the predicted goals with the actual XG to see where the teams, they, over, they beat it or they underperform it. And I was today working on something new where I was looking at the opposition to see whether when they played um, certain teams, whether they... So let's say, for example, United, whoever they played, whether the opponents actually met the XG that they were supposed to meet. And since game week 26, every single team that has played United has either met their XG or overperformed the XG that they were supposed to get. Well, I think, um, like, I was looking at the goalkeepers, like, Anana and Allison are both uh, top two for, mm. like, um, save, save percentage. Um, so... For me, that feels like the the defense is allowing shots to get those saves, and I think Martinez is back for United now, so that could oh, change no, a little bit. Oh, he's oh no! Yeah. So we're probably going to be playing Johnny Evans and uh, Maguire central pairing, which I hate. I hate for passion. I think Maguire is good, but Johnny Evans is very hit and miss. I think um, so that could spell trouble for United. Yeah, I think um, uh, because there was uh, let me find it. So Martinez and Lindluff at least a month, both of them out. Yeah, so that's good news for us anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so but, yeah, I think there's I feel... <laughs> like I, I wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if it's a high scoring fixture. Yeah. I'm hoping that we can uh, um, you know, now that Hoyland's back, we can get some goals and we do have the potential to get goals. But I definitely think we're going to concede a few. So I think defensive assets from United. Uh, just yeah, don't even look at it. Yep, fair enough. Um, all right, then um, Liverpool, Bradley and Kelleher. A lot of people, obviously, on wild cards and everything went there. Um, I guess you keep them until they end up losing their spot, probably. Yeah, I think you'd have to. I think there's. I I haven't seen an exact timeline of when Allison's going to be back. Yep. So, um, that's yeah. I'd just hold Kelleher and like you know. Worst case scenario, you, you can upgrade to someone like an Ariel or a Divrak or someone like that because I think I, I heard a rumor that Divrak is going to have the starting spot yeah, for the rest of the season. Hope he's so. out for the rest of the season. Yep, yep. Yeah. Even, so even then, he's so yeah. bad. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, but he is he is great for save points. He does yep. have a lot of saves this season. I think he's ranked top three for most saves this season. Yeah, but then the last couple of weeks I've started him and he's got two saves, two saves and <laughs> hasn't got that same point. <laughs> I'm like, make another save, man. <laughs> but no, he doesn't. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah because that's because Newcastle keep conceding so many sh- shots. So like, he tends to get the opportunity. Um, actually, speaking of Dubravka, let's go to the next one that I had for you. Um, now, I don't think I can get you on this podcast and not talk about Muniz uh, because Fulham played Newcastle this week. And I've mentioned Dubravka and Gold just can't seem to keep clean sheets. Um, now, Muniz didn't get anything from Forrest, but is he still a good play this week against Newcastle? And what do you think? Yeah, How I do think, you see the game? Yeah, I think he is. Um, Newcastle, I think I said on our stream last night, they were on that. I, I think they've looked a bit shaky defensively. Mm. Trippier hasn't been playing. Um, they've got a few injuries at the back there. I think Dan Byrne. Um, he started, I just don't think they've looked great defensively and they're giving up a few chances. And, and Meniz is the type of player that he doesn't need a lot of chances to sort of to get something. And if he gets one or two chances, I, there's a good chance that he's going to finish at least one of them. So, um, and I just, away Fulham, I think a Fulham fan on the stream last night said that away they are a little bit hit and miss, but at home they're a lot better. So just looking... Yeah, so they're at home against Newcastle. Mm. So I'd favour that for Fulham to be a half-decent fixture. And I think Meniz, if you do have him, I think he's a great play. Yep, fair enough. Um, all right, let's talk about um, Arsenal um, and Manchester City as well. Now, both of them have big European fixture next week. So do we expect to see some rotation? Now, obviously, they haven't played in game week 31 as well. By the time we obviously they're playing tonight, so we'll see whether there is rotation tonight as well, potentially. Uh, but with City playing Real Madrid, I think that's a way, if I'm not mistaken, and Arsenal playing Bayern. Um, do we expect to see some level of rotation? Because the opponents they're facing aren't hard per se. I think there's 
there might be some rotation, but I don't think it's going to be mass rotation. It might be one or two players. It might be like a Grealish over an Alvarez, or I think the key players like Foden, Harlan are going to be starting. I think KDB will get rotated. I think their defensive line, they seem to keep their center pairing pretty consistent, but you might see a Rico Lewis, um, you know, get a start um, or something like that. But I think with just what's at stake in the league at the moment, Liverpool is still winning, Arsenal is still winning. They're going to have to kind of just hope that they can get through these fixtures playing pretty much nearly full strength Champions League as well as the league. But I think there might be a couple of slight rotations, but I don't think like the important players like your Foden and your Haaland, I think are going to start as long as they're fit. I think they'll start both. Fair enough. Um, and uh, I had the captaincy next, but uh, before that, um, let's kindly kind of touch on like Crystal Palace because they have the double in 34. But the next two are tough ones against City and Liverpool. So if you're looking for, I guess, Palace players, or I know some people on a wildcard got Eze as well. Start Eze or maybe bench him. What would be the case? Depending on what your squad depth's like, because, yeah, City's a, a pretty tough fixture. And I was actually hoping for a bit more from Palace, but they just, yeah, they just lacked a little bit of a bite. But I think... um. People will be looking at the free hit 34. I think he's a must on the free hit in 34. Um, wild cards, I think their fixtures, apart from the Liverpool and City fixtures, they're, they're actually pretty decent. I think they can get something out of most of these fixtures. I was having a quick look now. So, you know, the Man United fixture, I wouldn't say he's a hard fixture either. We've just spoken about the injuries to Martinez and Lindelof. So I think we, we defend like a mid-table club and, you know, that's no, like that's just what it is, mm. and um, which makes teams go at us, but it also as I've said in previous pods uh, on our show, is that it's good for United attackers because we're, you know, we can counter. Yep. But, um, yeah, I think we're still vulnerable defensively. And, you know, I think the, the player like Eze, he seems to, in attack, sit higher, almost like a second striker at times there. He was sitting almost even with Mateta up top there, which is great for FPL because if he's in and around the box, he's either getting shots off or he's playing those key passes. So I think he's a good pick, but... I think it just depends on squad depth, whether you can bench him. But, you know, nothing's – I don't think it's the worst thing that you're starting. Like we've seen last year, there was a couple of hard fixtures where I was going to bench him, but I didn't have the squad depth, so I just played him, and then he managed to get a goal or an assist against a Man City or a Liverpool. So yep, can enough. happen. Yep, yep, fair enough. Um, cool. Now, let's end it with, like, captaincy. Um, some really great options this week. Where are you in terms of the armband? I've actually got on Son at the moment. Interesting. So for me, I had Son as the number one pick. Then I've got Palmer second, Salah third, and then I've had to chuck in Harlan, I think is, you know, Just an obvious pick. Harlan. Yeah. Just because it's Harlan. Yeah. But I think um, like Spurs record's actually pretty decent. Mm. So I, I, I could definitely see a fixture where I think – if anyone didn't watch the Spurs fixture on the weekend, Son was just Salah 2.0, missing chances after chances. I think he had a, a clear shot from like the six yard box and hit the post. Like he was just like, he was trying not to score. And I feel like that fixture could be something where instead of missing those chances, he could easily finish with two goals and an assist. Yeah, that's the one I, because I sold him this week and I wasn't worried about this week. It's the forest fixture that I'm really worried about. Um, yeah, and Forrest are going to have to go on the attack because yeah. they're trying to bank as many points as possible, which I guess I didn't put that into the thinking when I was analysing Fulham versus Nottingham Forest. I was kind of like, well, Forrest hasn't looked great, but I didn't look at the fact that they need to keep getting points yep. because obviously they're going to be deducted points. Evident have been deducted points, so they're kind of fighting to stay out of relegation. Yeah, exactly. Fair enough. So we'll kind of wait and see on that. Uh, I, for me, I obviously don't have Sun. So I've been contemplating between Salah and uh, Palmer. Now, Palmer is like just a bully against like the bottom teams. Um, he has some like great returns uh, from the bottom teams. Meanwhile, we know Salah he just finds a way to score against United every time he faces them. So I'm like, okay, where do I actually go? I still haven't really decided where. It's basically a flip of the switch, a flip of the... Um, a coin so i'm like kind of waiting to see if do i go with palmer do i go with salah i could the harland is also another option but um i'm trying to play differential to try and claw down some mini league um uh, leads so 
if everyone is most likely going Haaland or Salah, then I probably might go Palmer for this specific one. But yeah. That's... I, I like Palmer. I think he's a good option. Mm, fair enough. And Chelsea have a good record as well. Mm, that's true. So we'll see. Maybe he does well. Uh, but obviously, we'll have to wait and see what happens because they get to play Chelsea. So let's see what happens first against United. And if they look good, I think most likely, definitely going to Palmer. Uh, all right. Now, that's basically all I've got. Short uh, episode because we're still in the middle of the fixture. So there's so much still up in the air. Like injuries could happen. Anything could happen. I feel like there's just... going to be so much movement in the rankings from yeah. tomorrow and Friday just because people are going double Arsenal defense. People are going double Arsenal attack like yourself. People are going triple City still. So, yeah, I feel like um, it's going to be nervous watching like these people with all these players that I don't have. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. There's a lot to happen more. So we'll kind of wait and see what happens. Uh, and yeah, that's basically all I've got. Uh, so thank you, Q, for your time today. Do you have anything to plug? Um, Just our podcast. Um, Head over to FBO Image as well as with Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook. Um, podcasts are pretty much on all streaming platforms apart from YouTube. So we should have an episode out, I'd say, late Thursday night Australia time, which would be sort of morning to lunchtime UK time. Um, But yeah, and then... um. Yeah, head over to imindsets.com.au if you're in Australia. They uh, do gym apparel, pre-workouts. They support our uh, podcast and you can use our, you know, code word um, fantasy amateurs for a discount off any of their products. Awesome. And you can find me, Football Chat Box, on YouTube uh, where I do weekly videos and deadline streams. I think I'm nine subscribers or something away from 700 subs. So do come over and check the channel out and make sure to subscribe as well. And if you reached up to this point, make sure you hit the like button here and subscribe as well. That's it for this week's Scout the Game Week. I will be back after Game Week 32 and looking ahead to Game Week 33. Green Arrow Soul.